twang, thunk, splat. And so ends the short, undistinguished career of Basil of Baker Street. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 Disney villains that almost succeeded. Oh, Anna. If only there was someone out there who loved you. For this list, we'll be looking at notable Disney villains who nearly achieved their goals and got one over on the hero. Did you want any of these villains to win? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Professor Radigan, The Great Mouse Detective Basil of Baker Street is an obvious homage to Sherlock Holmes, and playing the role of Holmes' nemesis Moriarty is Professor Radigan. Radigan hopes to become the supreme ruler of all mousedom, and to do so, he kidnaps a toy maker named Mr. Flaversham. See here, I simply have no time for lost fathers. I didn't lose him. He was taken by a bat. The plan is for Flaversham to make Radigan a robot version of the Queen of the Mice that Radigan will use to usurp the throne. And it actually works. The Queen is successfully kidnapped from Buckingham Palace, and Radigan briefly becomes the dictatorial ruler of Maelstrom. Of course, Basil ultimately saves the day by revealing Radigan's treason, but things were looking pretty dire for a second there. And my new royal consult, Professor Radigan! Number 19. William Clayton, Tarzan in case you're unfamiliar with the premise of Tarzan, the titular human hero is adopted by a kind gorilla after his parents are killed, which leads him to become native to the jungles of Africa. The jungle is visited by a group of English explorers, including a gun-wielding guard named Clayton. Professor, you are here to find gorillas, not indulge some girlish fantasy. Clayton, with a secret ploy to kidnap gorillas so he can sell them back in England, eventually betrays the group. He does shockingly well in his endeavor. He imprisons all the heroes, including Tarzan and Jane, and ends up killing Kerchak. It's only thanks to Turk and Tantor that Tarzan escapes and battles Clayton, bringing his mutinous plans to a surprisingly violent end. I can use a challenge, because after mm. I get rid of you, rounding up your little ape family will be all too easy! Number 18. Cruella de Vil, 101 Dalmatians Cruella de Vil is, you could say, a bit of a cruel devil. But um, tch. A nasty and chain-smoking woman with skunk hair, she hopes to steal Perdita's puppies so she can skin them and make an elegant fur coat. <laughs> My only true love, darling, I live for furs. I worship furs. She successfully steals the pups with the help of goon brothers Horace and Jasper, but they are rescued by a well-placed Tibbs and the pursuing Pongo and Perdita. It's a very close call, and it reveals Corella's malicious plans to everyone. It's the closest that she gets to winning, but she also makes a last-ditch effort in the climax of the film by ramming the moving van. On two different occasions, she comes within mere inches of victory. You, you fools! Oh, you imbecile! Ah, shut up. Number 17, Otto, Wally. With shades of HAL 9000 from 2001: A Space Odyssey. Otto is the malicious autopilot system that controls the Axiom. Otto turns bad when the plant is brought on board, as it orders its disposal and refuses to return to Earth. Otto, things have changed! We've gotta go back! Sir, orders are, do not return to Earth. It then mutinies with Gofor, locking away McCray and throwing out both Wally and Eve. It's only thanks to a cleaning robot named Microbe Obliterator, or Mo, that Wally and Eve aren't ejected into space. One literal second makes all the difference in Otto's plans. Not one to give up, the rogue AI then crushes Wally before it's deactivated by McCray. With the one second difference and near killing of the hero, Otto comes painfully close to securing a win. Wally? Oh. Number 16, The Evil Queen, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Disney villains were proudly showing their mettle from the very beginning. The Evil Queen is the first baddie in the Disney canon, with Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs serving as the company's debut feature effort. 
The Evil Queen is Snow White's stepmother, and she devises the death of her beautiful stepdaughter so she can remain the fairest one of all. And now, a special sort of death for one so fair. You know how it goes. She disguises herself as a hag so as to fool Snow White into eating a poisoned apple. The plan works flawlessly, and Snow White falls into a deep slumber. But the queen is eventually bested by the power of love's first kiss. <laughs> Number 15, King Candy, Wreck-It Ralph. Modeled after the Mad Hatter from Alice in Wonderland, King Candy once ruled over the kart racing video game Sugar Rush. He's got a lot to answer for. Near the end of the movie, we learn that he tried to delete Vanellope's code, turning her into a glitch in the process and locking up everyone's memories of her as a playable character. And when they see her glitching and then you twitching and just being herself, they'll think our game is broken. We'll be put out of order for good. He then lies to Ralph, causing him to betray his friend. And it isn't until Ralph sees that Penelope is a playable character from the outside that he begins to learn the truth of what happened. Candy was super close to getting away with all of it. He's a very smart guy, and the only reason he lost was because he couldn't manipulate the outside world. If Penelope was never meant to exist, then why is her picture on the side of the game console? Number 14, Mordu, Brave. A fairy tale set in the medieval Scottish Highlands, Brave concerns the trials of young Princess Merida. We learn of the antagonist Mordu early on when the massive demon bear attacks Merida's family. The biggest bear you've ever seen. His hide littered with the weapons of fallen warriors, his face scarred with one dead eye. However, Merida comes to realize that the scary bear is actually housing the spirit of an old prince. The bear's penchant for violence comes to a climax in, well, the climax, when it attacks Merida, the clan warriors, and Merida's mother turned bear. It nearly takes them all but suffers an ironic death when it's crushed by a falling standing stone. If Mordu was just like two feet to the left, it would have survived and killed everyone. Mordu has never been seen since and is roaming the wilds waiting his chance of revenge. <laughs> Number 13, Yzma, the Emperor's New Groove. Yzma is truly a phenomenal villain. She has big ambitions and is as over the top as any memorable animated villain should be. She begins the story as Cusco's advisor, but is fired by the haughty Incan Emperor. As a means of revenge and to claim power for herself, Yzma concocts a coup and attempts to poison Cusco. Oh right, the poison, the poison for Cusco, the poison chosen specially to kill Cusco, Cusco's poison. However, the plan is foolishly foiled by Kronk, who gives him the wrong potion, hilariously turning Cusco into a llama. Either way, no wrench is thrown in her plans as she still manages to become Empress. The only reason she loses in the climactic battle is because a mindless Kronk hits her with a trap door. Yzma has some good plans, but some really bad luck. What are the odds that trapdoor laid me out here? Number 12, Hans, Frozen. The biggest Disney film of the modern era wonderfully subverts the company's tradition. Princess Anna meets and is instantly smitten by Prince Hans, who is visiting from the Southern Isles for Elsa's coronation. But he has ulterior motives. Not so much there for a party as he is to take control of Arendelle, Hans coldly betrays Anna when she requires true love's first kiss. As 13th in line in my own kingdom, I didn't stand a chance. I knew I'd have to marry into the throne somewhere. He very nearly succeeds in striking down Elsa, but the plan is foiled just in the nick of time by the interfering Anna. If Anna hadn't been rescued by Olaf, or if Hans had just killed her outright, Arendelle would no doubt have fallen into his hands. I tried to save her, but it was too late. Her skin was ice, her hair turned white. Your sister is dead because of you. Number 11, Gaston, Beauty and the Beast. While Gaston is an unlikable narcissist, there's no denying that he has spunk. 
Gaston goes full Frankenstein and rallies a mob into attacking the castle. It's time to follow me. The group successfully breaks into the castle, but they're fended off by its sentient inhabitants. Well, everyone is but Gaston, who makes it all the way to the Beast. Gaston sends an arrow into Beast's back, throws him out a window, and later stabs him with a knife. Whatever your opinion of this takedown, it definitely gets the job done. Gaston would have never gotten Belle, but he did succeed in slaying the monster. You know, technically, before he was saved by magic. At least I got to see you one last time. Number 10, Ernesto de la Cruz, Coco. Remember me. Though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Ernesto was certainly an ambitious man. Once Hector called it quits, Ernesto poisoned his drink and stole his work, passing it off as his own. And you know what? It actually worked. Ernesto became an icon in his native country, and a beautiful mausoleum was erected in his memory. When it comes to the land of the living, Ernesto straight up beat Hector, as painful as it is to acknowledge. He nearly won in the land of the dead as well, if it wasn't for the family rescuing Hector and Miguel from the cenote pit. If Ernesto had disposed of Hector and Miguel in a more elaborate manner, the secret would never have been revealed, and Ernesto would continue to be revered and beloved. <laughs> Number 9. Dr. Facilier, The Princess and the Frog Dr. Facilier wins a lot throughout The Princess and the Frog. He turns Naveen into a frog, he disguises Lawrence as human Naveen, and he's even granted the use of scary shadow demons by the voodoo spirits. We gonna find ourselves a frog! Search everywhere! The bayou, the quarter, bring him to me alive. I need his heart pumping! Said demons later capture frog Naveen, and even though Ray steals the talisman disguising Lawrence, Facilier squishes him to death in one of the most upsetting deaths in early 21st century Disney memory. In fact, if Facilier didn't gloat and do the whole villain monologue thing with Tiana, things would have worked out quite well for him. However, he didn't take into account Tiana's long tongue. I got news for you, Shadow Man. It's not slime, it's mucus! <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Number 8. Maleficent, Sleeping Beauty Why, it's Maleficent. What does she want here? Maleficent is one of the all-time greatest Disney villains. Not just because of her over-the-top outfit and greenish-gray skin, although that helps, but because she's truly menacing and dangerous. Not only does she manage to curse Aurora, but she also successfully tricks her into pricking her finger on a spinning wheel, which of course forces the princess into a deep sleep. You poor simple fools, thinking you could defeat me, me, the mistress of all evil. She even serves as a tough final boss after taking the form of a dragon. And if it wasn't for the fairies and a particularly well-placed sword throw, Philip would have been a goner. Meanwhile, Aurora would be stuck sleeping for a long, long time. <laughs> Number 7. Judge Claude Frollo, The Hunchback of Notre Dame There, there, Quasimodo. I know it hurts. But now, the time has come to end your suffering. Things look pretty grim near the end of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Frollo tricks Quasimodo into leading him to the Court of Miracles, which in turn results in the capture of Esmeralda and her people. Esmeralda is also sentenced to burn at the stake for refusing Frollo's advances. Luckily, Quasimodo saves the day, resulting in an ambush on the cathedral. nearly kills Quasimodo by sending him over the edge of the building, and is ultimately defeated by a weak and crumbling gargoyle. If he just pulled himself all the way up instead of standing on the gargoyle, the Hunchback of Notre Dame might have had a very different ending. Ah! 
Number 6. Don Bellwether, Zootopia All right, well, I'd say the case is in good hands. Us little guys really need to stick together, right? Like glue. <laughs> good one. Despite her appearance, Bellwether is one of the most immoral and manipulative villains in the Disney canon. For one thing, her plan to segregate the Predators actually worked, and Zootopia was plunged into a bitter civil strife. Unlike most Disney villains, Bellwether won, and her plan was completely successful. Think of the headline. Hero cop killed by savage fox. It was only by pure happenstance that Judy even realized the truth about the Night Howlers. Just imagine if she didn't return home, if Gideon didn't deliver the pies, if the kids didn't run through the flower patch, or if Gideon didn't share what his family called the flowers. That's a lot of ifs that ended up foiling what was otherwise a pretty foolproof plan. Former Mayor Dawn Bellwether is behind bars today, guilty of masterminding the savage attacks that have plagued Zootopia of late. Number 5. Ursula, the Little Mermaid <laughs> How long, love boy? Ariel! The climax of The Little Mermaid is probably one of the scariest and most unsettling sequences in Disney history, and all of it stems from Ursula. First, Triton is transformed into a polyp, a moment that continues to plague our nightmares to this day. Angered by the deaths of her eels Flotsam and Jetsam, Ursula grows to a ridiculously massive size and starts controlling the ocean. Luckily, she happens to raise a sunken ship with a splintered bowsprit, which Eric uses to impale Ursula and bring an end to her evil. It was certainly fortuitous that Ursula raised such a conveniently shaped ship, and right in front of a drowning Eric to boot. Number 4. Mother Gothel, Tangled For someone with no supernatural abilities, Mother Gothel certainly dealt a lot of damage. First, she masterminds the kidnapping of Rapunzel, and has both Eugene and the Stabbingtons captured and brought to the palace. Well, if that's all you desire, then be on your way. I was going to offer you something worth 1,000 crowns. Would have made you rich beyond belief, and that wasn't even the best part. <laughs> oh, well, say, lovey. Enjoy your crown. What's the best part? It comes with revenge on Flynn Rider. She's certainly an intelligent villain, and those are often the scariest. Secondly, she actually manages to stab one of the protagonists, which is more than most Disney villains can say. Oh, don't worry, dear. Unfortunately for her, Eugene managed to hang on just long enough to cut Rapunzel's hair, destroying its magic and severing its ties to Gothel, resulting in her death. <laughs> What have you done? What have you done? No. 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 Just think what would have happened if Gothel pushed him out of the tower window instead. Our secret will die with him. Number 3. Hades, Hercules. <laughs> okay, well, I deserve that. Eric, 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 can we talk? This is another defeat that comes down to pure rotten luck. After defeating the Cyclops, Hercules is nearly crushed by a falling pillar, but is saved at the last second by Meg. This in turn breaks Hades' promise, which allows Hercules to regain his strength, storm Olympus, defeat the Titans, and free the gods. All because of a falling pillar. Ah! <laughs> Thanks a ton, Wonder Boy! But at least I've got one swell consolation prize! If that pillar never cracked, Hercules would still be weak and unable to save the gods from the Titans. As if Hades' luck wasn't bad enough, Herc's godhood is restored in the sticks at the last possible second, preventing the hero from becoming just another soul in the river and fulfilling Hades' plans. Schmooze. <laughs> Get away from me! Don't touch me! Get your slimy souls off me! He's not gonna be happy when he gets out of there! Number 2. Jafar, Aladdin What have you done? Trust me! After he becomes the genie's master, Jafar uses his wishes to become the most powerful sorcerer in the world. And really, it doesn't get much more threatening than that. 
His fantastic powers allow him to win the final battle by trapping Jasmine in an hourglass, transforming both Abu and the magic carpet, and trapping Aladdin in a circle of fire. Are you afraid to fight me yourself, you cowardly snake? A snake am I? He even manages to transform into a massive freaking snake. Victory was all but certain, and all he had to do was squeeze Aladdin to death. However, Aladdin placed his ego, resulting in his eventual downfall. If only he just squeezed him like Iago said. Jafar, Jafar, he's our man. If he can't do it, great! And everything that goes with it! No! No! I'm getting out of here! Phenomenal cosmic powers! Come on, you're the genie! I love my ego! Itty bitty living space. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Horned King, the Black Cauldron. He is successful in using the cauldron to raise the dead. My beloved warriors have come to life. All the dead of centuries past. Never has anyone created an army like this. Queen of Hearts, Alice in Wonderland. She nearly has Alice decapitated. The prisoner at the bar is charged with enticing Her Majesty, the Queen of Hearts, into a game of croquet and thereby willfully and with malice of forethought, teasing, tormenting, and otherwise annoying our beloved... Never mind all that! Get to the part where I lose my temper! Sean Yu, Mulan. He's successful in capturing the Emperor. No! Come on! Captain Hook, Peter Pan. If not for Tinkerbell, Peter would have met his end and he would have won. Hey, Tink, look at Wendy left. Hey, stop that, stop it. What's the matter with you? Bob, a bomb? Don't be ridiculous. Percival C. McLeach, the rescuers down under. He almost kills Cody at Crocodile Falls. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Scar, The Lion King <laughs> Few if any Disney villains are as successful as Scar. His great villainous scheme actually comes to fruition, as Mufasa dies and Simba is banished from the kingdom. It's a shocking and incredibly dark turn of events that we truly didn't expect from a Disney film. Scar subsequently rules the Pride Lands for many years, and if it weren't for Timon and Pumbaa's divine-like intervention, he would have ruled for many more. Mufasa, no, you're dead. Or he could have just killed Simba directly, but we guess he's above murdering children in cold blood. Regardless, Simba returns and ends Scar's reign for good, proving that you should never ever take half measures, and that if you want something done right, you should do it yourself. Especially if you're a diabolical villain in a Disney movie. Let, no, let, 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 let me explain. No, you don't understand. No, I didn't mean. No, no. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.